Hi there, I'm Dimitri, and in this video, we are going to show you how to use the inbox block in software. Don't you just love it when cool apps have cool features? I do, and I work here, so I'm like extra lucky. Our inbox layout works a little bit similar to an email inbox layout, where you can select an item from your sidebar on the left side of the screen, and its details are displayed inside the window next to it dynamically. The inbox block is a great way to showcase information side by side, as it's a really great way for users to see a lot of information and navigate longer list items without having to context switch. Let's dive into this. So I'm going to go into the student portal template which will be a great example for this. You can get this template for free by going to our template library on our website. So as you can see here, this is an inbox block where when I click on any of these teachers on the left, the details of that professor are on the right. So if I click on this teacher, for example, you'll see that we have information about what the professor does. As mentioned previously, this is a great way to be able to sift through different items without having to context switch. Let's try to recreate this setup. As you can see, based on what we were looking at before, it's clear that the name was essentially what is here. And then the about section is this right up here. And you can see right here that this is connected to a couple other tables. So first of all, this data set is connected to courses, which showcases vision science. And if we go into courses, we can see that this has a myriad of different courses that connect to different teachers and lastly course documents that are all set up here and interconnected. Let's go back into software and build this exact setup out using our inbox blocks. All right, so let's make a brand new one right here. First, obviously, as always, you're gonna press this plus sign to add a block. And then over here, we can type out inbox. And just as an aside, you're gonna make sure that you are on the professional plan in order to get the inbox block. So after creating the inbox block, we're going to need to make sure that we first of all, connect this to our data source. So go here and I'm gonna connect it to my Airtable. And then I'm gonna select the student portal by software. And the specific table I'm gonna to need to get is users. Now, as we saw in the Airtable base, we have different types of users, so teachers and students. Lucky for us, there's a nice little system built in within software that lets you add what is called a conditional filter. So by going to conditional filters here, I'm able to add condition and then pick, you guessed it, role and then is, and make sure that the value matches up with teacher. Now, pro tip, what I recommend you do in this circumstance to avoid frustration is just go into your error table, copy this and then paste it. Typing it out, every once in a while you make a mistake and then you'd be like, wait, why did that not work? And then you're like, oh, I guess I can't type. And then you get frustrated at yourself and it's a whole thing. So don't let that happen and just copy and paste the cell, especially if it is a single select option like this and that's all you need. Now, just a thing to point out as can be seen at the bottom here, the editing mode doesn't show accurate results. So you're going to have to go into preview mode for it to limit the view here and show you that. So if I go to preview, now that I'm here, it will only show the teachers. Whereas if I'm in the editor here, it is going to show everything. Now, when it comes to the way this looks, it, it, it looks a little different, right? Uh, the, the information is not exactly the same as what was in the example. That's because we got to map this data to show up here. So first of all, I'm going to sort this by the name and then do A to Z. And then I'm going to go to the content section here and add the same information. So let's go to here. And first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to delete that inline filter and we are going to tweak this search bar. So for the search bar, you always need to put a field in order for this to work. So the item we're gonna select is the name item here. And then you'll see that there's two different sections here. Item fields, which works with this section over here and then list detail fields, which works with this section on the right. So if you recall from our example on the left, we can hide the photo major and even the role here. And what we're gonna do in order to make it look the same is we can show the name field here and then adjust the style for it to be a little bit more aesthetic. So I'm just gonna increase the size a little bit, make sure that it is bold, maybe make it even bigger, whatever your preference is. And then that's one step. And then on the right side here, I'm going to pick this and go to photo. 
so it can connect to this field. Then what I'd recommend you do is clear out all these default ones unless it's exactly what you want at the beginning. Then what we're gonna do is add a field that is an image field and we can select the photo here. I'm gonna remove the label. Then after the photo, we are going to re-add their name with a text block here. Now you can add something like an H3 as well to make it pop a little bit more. So, but I'm gonna remove these labels and then just put the name of the professor or actually maybe even an H2 would pop a little bit more. Then obviously you can adjust the style if you'd like, make it bold, remove the label, and then let's add a text field and the about section. Let's again, remove the label. And lastly, let's add that tag that we saw that referenced which course that this teacher taught. All professors should probably be teaching something, right? Right? You'd hope. <laughs> then we can pick the courses and once again, remove the label. Then if we go into the preview mode, we should have a very similar layout to what we had in the beginning. So let's find somebody here and boom. Very similar layout to what we had prior. So let's compare the two. Obviously you can change the style. As you can see here, this is grayed and this is a different size and boldness as well as the tag has the color associated to it. Now, obviously if you wanted to take this and change this to being uh, all of the different people in here, you can remove this conditional filter or if you ended up wanting to have it be the students, you can go here and change this role to student and adjust the fields within that so that people can go through the data set and get the information for the different people they're looking for. I think the amazing thing about our app is the fact that you can have a lot of different people in one Airtable table, I'm saying table a lot, and showcase them in different ways, utilizing the same type of blocks with just a slight filter tweak. And that's really good for data consolidation and prevents you from having a million of these tables within Airtable or whatever data source you end up using. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below about inbox blocks and let us know what you think about all the other great content that we have at Softer. I hope you join us next time and we'll see you in the next one.